France turned on the style in the second half at Athlone Stadium. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Ireland start this one on the front foot. They collect a kick from France, go through some phases, backs and forwards, carrying, making yards. They're stretching the French defence and they force France to concede the penalty. Ireland then decide to go up the line into the 22. They, from there, they work it to within five metres and France get pinged for offside. We have a quick tap then from Finton Gunn. He runs it straight out of Fane and Tuolagi. Neither of them are back 10. Fane kind of tries to tackle him, but he was offside anyway. But Gunn manages to get to the line, stretches out, grounds it next to the post. Prendergast then adds the extras 7 0 to Ireland and a dream start for them. Fox then gets pinged for not rolling away. France managed to kick it into the corner. They're threatening from five metres out, but there's some crossing. They can see the penalty and Ireland are able to clear, but can see that the threat is there from France, Ireland. You know, finding it difficult to contain those big runners that they have. France then are holding onto the ball. Ireland putting in big hits, the likes of Tulagi and Gazzotti really carrying well for France. Nochi then breaks the line. He goes very close, stopped under the post just short. France then recycled. They drive over, but they get held up. Ireland are able to clear. The danger then seems to have passed, but France strike just as Ireland were maybe beginning to relax. Costes gets his hands free in a tackle at wide, gives it off to, I think it was uh, Droit, who breaks down the left. Jano is running a great support line. He takes the pass, draws the cover defence, and passes to Ferte, who goes over to score. Ruiz converts to Levelis at 7 all. Ireland then get ping for being offside from a kick, and they give France an easy shot to take the lead. Ruiz obliges from the tee, 10-7, and it feels like Ireland need a response at this stage because France are beginning to dominate proceedings. Tulagi then, he lifts Gunn at the back of a rook and carries him, very reminiscent to Stephen Ferris on Wilgenia in the, what was it, 20, what World Cup was that? 2011 World Cup maybe? But yeah, Ferris on, on Genia, that kind of thing, like just picked him up like a, a rag doll, but to a laggy is offside, so it's a penalty to Ireland. Ireland then win a penalty at scrum time as France walk it around and Ireland decide to kick to the corner. The scrum was probably one facet that Ireland will be pleased with how it went today. So yeah, Ireland then from there, they retain the ball. They have some pick and goes and one out runners and they're within the shadow of the post. They get held up over the line, but uh, Oradu was offside. So Ireland then again, they decide to go for the tap. They're pounding away at the line again and then they move out a little bit wider. The vine gets over to score. Prendergast strokes over the conversion. 14-10, Ireland back in front and we have a really re re exciting game so far. France though, they hit back, back immediately. Ireland make a hash of the restart, drop it, and France go to the big men to carry again. Julian then gets over to score. Royce converts. 17-14, the lead changes hands once again. France then kind of go up through the gears. They're applying more pressure from a mall in the 22. Feels like a turning point, you know, can they score? Can Ireland hold them out? Paddy McCarthy gets a yellow card for pulling down a second maul after that within maybe five metres of the line. And we talked about him before the game as well. The guy, you know, he might have a bright future ahead of him, but he gives away silly penalties and makes silly errors. And he's going to have to eliminate that from his game if he's going to make it at senior level he does have the natural talent there but you've got to have the discipline and you know the, the um nous as well which will come in time hopefully for him 
Then we have a what seemed like a clever piece of play from France. They tap the penalty. Joven taps it. Then he actually places the ball behind him. And Nucci takes it and goes around. And then they recycle and France go over the line. But it's obstruction because there was two laggy. Joven and somebody else obstructed the Irish defenders after he put the ball down. So, you know, what seemed like maybe a clever piece of play on the training ground, when the laws get applied to it, it, it wasn't so clever. In the end, felt like a big moment, you know, could have been the winning of the game because it felt like the next score was going to determine who's going to have the momentum going forward. And from there, then it's halftime, 17-14, crucially France holding that slim lead. France then into the second half, um, you know, first half to put pressure on set piece, especially at line out for Ireland, denying them that platform that they've used throughout the rest of the tournament. They've also looked dangerous from broken play and big men were posing themselves towards the end of the half. And the second half, as that starts, that just ramps up again. So they get themselves into Irish territory, set up the mall. They're able to mull it over. Ireland just not able to defend it. Joven is the scorer. Roos adds on the extras 24-14 to France. We spoke before the game about the fact that both teams have good attacking malls, but it was all about who could defend them all well. Ireland not really defending them all, you know, all that well. As I said, they gave away the penalty and the yellow card at the end of the first half. And in the second half, then they couldn't stop the momentum for France to get over. By contrast, France have been stopping Ireland at source by disrupting their line out so much, nicking ball, not letting them actually go to their, you know, mall as well. France then, they don't take their foot off the throat now. They press again and they come back into the Irish 22. They suck in the defence and then their portier finds a gap and then has the power to get over. Royce tags on the extras and there's now daylight between the teams. 31-14. Really costly yellow card period for Ireland that one. Ireland then, they win a penalty, kick it into 22. I feel like they need some kind of response at this stage. They have time, but it's all about whether they have anything left in the tank to be able to step up to France's level and, you know, get that response that they need. But they overthrow the line out. McCarthy goes over the back. France go in, compete at the breakdown, win another penalty. Ireland then have another period of possession, but again, France's defence is solid. France weather a long period of Irish possession. They're so aggressive at the breakdown, they're making it really difficult for Ireland. You know, Ireland have to get in there, fight for the ball, and then not quite having the momentum to get on the front foot because the ball is so slow. And then at times, then France are just able to flood in and turn the ball over. That's what they do. They finally turn the ball over and they come forward. Ireland, by contrast, are decidedly passive in defence and standing off, they can see the penalty. Ruiz points to the post, but he can't convert the penalty. Feels like, you know, Ireland are getting chances to get back into the game, but they just can't take them. But also, France at this stage, they've eaten up a big chunk of the clock and they have that 17-point lead. And it's looking, you know, more or sorry, less and less likely that Ireland can actually hit back. Ireland, though, you know, their game, they come forward again, but they just lack that genuine kick chase. They're kicking long, but there's no real kick chase from them. And it means that they're then having to build from halfway instead of, you know, closer to the French 22. France steal yet another Irish line out and the Irish defence just can't contain them. They're conceding ground and Fuerte manages to go over in the corner. Ruiz misses the conversion, but they're now more than three converted tries ahead and with just 10 minutes left on the clock. 
France, you know, Ireland looking for basically a consolation score at this stage, but France break from their own 22. It's uh, Jugo makes the initial break and then he finds Nochi, who he's got Jeannot on the inside as an option, but backs himself and just has too much power. Goes from halfway. There's just a fullback back there as others are kind of covering possible passes. And yeah, his power just brings him over there to score. The conversion makes it 43-14. And it's a fair reflection, I think, on the gulf between the two teams on the day. France then add to Ireland's misery with another break out try. Monodant makes the initial break and then it's finished off by Doré. The conversion makes it 52-14 and then that was the final score. As I said, France is really turning on a style there at the end. Ireland looked completely out on their feet, but France, they love that transition from, you know, broken play. They attack and everybody is there to support. By contrast, Ireland don't seem to have that ability to go from distance at all. So in terms of then the two teams, France, they were the foreign team coming into the final. I said before the game, Ireland were going to have to find another level if they were going to get their hands on the trophy, but they just couldn't do it. France took away their line out and that was Ireland's platform for attack. And they were so aggressive at the breakdown. Ireland, by contrast, were passive in defence. And then that lack of ball security made it so much harder for them to respond when they went behind. They never really reacted to the breakdown, preferring to basically stand off in their positions for potential carries or dummy runs and basically just watching France turn the ball over in front of them. I feel like, you know, with a chance to maybe play this game again, a couple of the players would think, no, we've got to put players in in response and make sure we secure that ball. And then even if it's slow ball, just build on from there and make sure we hold on to it. But they, they weren't able to adapt on the fly on the pitch. Now, this is undoubtedly a talent, talented Irish team, but they don't, you don't see them scoring that many tries from breaks from their own half. France showed that they've got that kind of thing in spades and their ability to soak up the Irish pressure and score from so deep was one of the major differences between the team today. Ireland did well to make it to only their second, you know, under 20 rugby World Cup final in their history. They had a good tournament overall, but it just wasn't their day. France deserved under 20s rugby World Cup champions. They were the best team throughout the entire tournament. There's some major talent in that squad there. We're obviously going to go on and represent the full French team in the future. Major congratulations to them. Absolutely well-deserved winners and, you know, great, I think, ambassadors for the sport of rugby as well. They've now won the last three under-20 rugby World Cups on the trot. And, you know, the future is looking bright for the French national team.